Okay, awesome. Uh, just as everyone kind of funnels in, I'll just do a bit of a, an introduction. So thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. My name is Tess and I'm from Sustainable Kingston. Um, I won't take too much of the time in the introduction, but just so everyone knows, this will be recorded and posted to the Sustainable Kingston YouTube channel after this. So if you want to rewatch it or send it to anyone, uh, you are able to do that. Uh, so now I'm just going to pass it over to Blue Marble Learning Scene so they can do an introduction and take it away. Wonderful. Welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you join us here and uh, we want to thank Sustainable Kingston for this opportunity. I'm Cindy and this is Tara um, and she's going to explain our first slide before we get started officially. Yeah, so we're going to just let anyone who might be stragglers come in and make their way in. And we're going to get you guys to do a little bit of work because we're hoping that today's webinar is interactive. And that involves you getting out your phones or getting out a different web browser on your computer to go to www.menti.com. It's up on the screens right now. You can see that website. And when you go there, you're going to enter the code 19017225. Five. It is also in the chat if you uh, can find it there. And as you're making your way in there, um, these are just some macro photos that you can take a guess at what you think they are while we're waiting for anyone else to join us. Also, after you've entered Menti, if you want to go into the chat and just let us know where you're from, we would love to know where our audience is today. Yay, Sarah from Guelph. We are recognizing some of the people on here. Hi, Sarah. Hi, I'm James. I live here in Kingston. Excellent. Hi, James. Hi, Dirk. And some from Toronto. Kirkfield, Kingston, all over Guelph, uh, Ontario. I just read a word <laughs> and I said it. <laughs> Excellent. So I think, I'm not sure, Tess, if you see anyone else straggling in, but I think uh, we're probably good to keep going. All right. So welcome to the Sustainable Kingston February webinar called Re-Inspire Your Curiosity. Um, Tara and I are um, part co-founders of Blue Marble Learning Scene. It's a brand new business. We officially launched February 1st. And our goal today is to re-inspire or reconnect you with nature and hopefully get you to slow down and observe. So Blue Marble Learning Scene is a new business, as Cindy said, and our goal or our mission is to bring environmental wonder and awe to humans of all ages by providing a safe space for unique exploration and growth. And we do this by offering products and services that we call experiences to help you reconnect with nature and also re-inspire your curiosity. So today we're gonna jump right into it. As I already mentioned, we are hoping this webinar is going to be interactive and engaging. We don't wanna just sit here and talk with you. We want you to interact with us and we're gonna do that through Menti. So for those of you that have already gone on to the Menti website, great, we'll get there in just a moment. For those of you who have just joined or missed the instructions, you can go to menti.com, it's on the screen right now, uh, on your cell phone or on a different web browser and enter the code 19017025 to do that interaction with us. So the first interaction we wanted from you guys was to see what you think these macro photos are. And so we can see live results of what everyone thinks these macro photos are up on the screen. So we have three photos. The first photo we're asking, do you think it's a plant, a bird, a fish, a reptile, amphibian, or a mammal for all the three photos? And if we take a look at the results, we can see that most people are thinking that the first photo is a plant, but I believe we have one person or two that think it might be a reptile or amphibian. Photo number two we're thinking is, a, you know, a 
plant? We've got or? a couple different answers. Yeah. We've got three sinking plant, two sinking fish, two amphibian, two mammal, and everyone agrees the last one looks like a mammal. So if you haven't voted yet, I think we do have a couple more people uh, than what we have votes. We have nine people voted. Go ahead and make those votes before we show you. I personally really like the third image. I think it kind of looks like a nose. Yep. So uh, that's probably why everyone is guessing mammal. Okay, we've got 10. We've got a couple more votes coming in. So we're just going to check and see what our answers are. So number one was a plant, number two an amphibian, number three is definitely a mammal. But did you guess what they actually are? So yeah. we're going to take the pictures back so you can actually see where they came from. So the first one was a sunflower, the second is the American toad, and the third one is a raccoon. Definitely yeah. a nose. I knew that that first one was going to be tricky. I was super excited when I got this macro photo because I took the photo and I could barely tell what it was. It's kind of um, a little, what do you call it? A little misleading. tricky, misleading when you get that close on sunflower seeds, but um, very interesting nonetheless. Sunflower seeds are so cool. <laughs> so today we want to reconnect you with nature and inspire your curiosity uh, with nature because nature is healing and especially in today and what's happening around the world, we need a little bit of healing and we need a little bit of that connection with nature. And you probably already know this, or if you don't, you've heard the general health benefits and benefits of being in nature, but overall you can see them on your screen. Being in nature can help you reduce your stress. It helps you sleep better, not just the fresh air, but actually just being outside. And it can improve your mood. If you're like me, just stepping outside can help just turn a bad day into a good day or just make you happier than you were before. It also helps you to focus better. So that small break in that fresh air and just stepping outside, that reducing of stress can help you when you get back to work or to what you were doing, actually do a better job by focusing. Yeah, and uh, down the grapevine a little bit, maybe not directly, but it will actually help strengthen your immunity by getting outside and breathing some of that fresh air and getting a little bit of that exercise. It also obviously improves your fitness. You at least had to walk outside. That's a few steps. But if you go hiking or skiing or some activity outside, your fitness level is going to be better. Yeah. And you don't have to be an avid hiker, or be into all these extreme sports in order to get the benefits of being outside. Just sitting in nature in your yard or even looking out your window can help bring some of these benefits that nature can provide us to you every day. So in our webinar today, we're hoping through this interaction, through talking about nature and maybe looking out our window a couple times, that we are going to bring these benefits to you right now. So we want to know, get to know you a little bit better and what you like to do in nature right now. So we're going to do another mentee question and it's going to populate a word cloud. And just in case you don't know what a word cloud is, it's where you put in the words. So if you see a word that somebody else has already put in, so if I put in gardening and somebody else sees gardening, you can put it in too and the word gets bigger. So the word cloud changes as the words are added. And so because I forgot to tell you, if you have closed down that mentee website, you're going to need to get it back up again because we're going to be using this throughout the entire presentation. So you'll go to menti.com using the same code we did before, the 19.01.72.5. It's at the top of your screens now. Go ahead and enter in words or short phrases about things that you like to do in nature and give us as many as you want. Enter as many times as you want. So I see already we've got our first entry, which is walking, running, hiking. I don't envy the people who like running. I am not a runner. I will walk and hike with the rest of you. Mushroom Building. hunting. Ah, I like that. Mushroom hunting. I am curious who said mushroom hunting because I love looking at mushrooms. I am terrified to try and eat mushrooms, although I really want to harvest my own mushrooms outside. Building snowmen, boating, walking is definitely a big one that we all love. Breathing. I really like seeing that. <laughs> just, just breathing. Bird watching. She's our birder in the house. Yeah. We were just telling Tess before everyone came on that we were actually practicing this presentation earlier in the week. And we looked out our window, which is right here in front of us, and we saw a beautiful, massive pileated woodpecker. Um, I got super 
excited about that. <laughs> Gardening, kayaking, observe, turtles, swimming, visit with companions. Love that. The peace of being outside, taking photos, uh, kick sledding. Kick sledding. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, gardening, that's one of my favorites. And it's getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> As we go, wow, I, this is a lot bigger than I thought we were going to get in this. I mean, there's so many different things you can do outside in nature. And I'm really grateful for you guys for giving us all these answers because I haven't actually been going outside that much. I haven't been doing what I preach. And these are giving me some really great ideas, some of which are reserved for summer, but I haven't made a snowman yet this year. No, the snow hasn't been the best for that, for here in this area. Water skiing, sledding. Yes. Skiing. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you guys. Can feel free to continue to share with us. We are going to move back to the uh, the presentation itself. And we'll kind of check out the final answers of that later. Oh, I just got to change. There we go. So obviously, uh, as you can see from the word cloud we just created, there are so many different things that we can do outside. And if anyone's like me, um, maybe your mom if we didn't know, say we are a mother daughter team, Cindy is my mom. Um, she'll tell me, Terry, you need to go outside. And I'll be like, okay, and I'll just go and I'll do it. I'll just go outside because I know I should be outside. I know there are health benefits to being outside, but I don't actually go out. I don't connect with nature. I don't observe, I just do. Um, and so that, you know, being in nature and just doing that's fine, but you get even more benefits if you can slow down if you can connect and if you can just observe and take in the beauty that's around you. And so this kind of, you know, just going outside and not necessarily connecting might actually contribute to something that we've read recently. Author Robin Wall Kimmerer said that young people today can recognize over a hundred corporate logos, but by contrast, they recognize fewer than 10 plants. To me, this is just sad and a bit scary. And I don't know if I necessarily believe it, but we do want to test this out today. So we are going to do a little investigation with you guys as our guinea pigs to see if you can recognize plants and corporate logos. So we're going to ask you through a mentee in a moment to have a look and identify these five logos and these five plants. Okay, so we are going to need you to refresh your Menti because we are using a different code. So the code we're using this time is 36749050. So you just type in the menti.com again. And then I'm going to keep the results hidden from everyone. So <laughs> it's like a test in school. You can't cheat off each other. You might be cheating off someone who's saying the wrong thing anyways. Um, so we did try and pick logos that were um, Canadian, mm -hmm. um, that were kind of local. I mean, no, 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 these are really local. <laughs> local to Ontario. You will find them all in Ontario at the very least. Yeah. And we'll see. So the way that you vote, it, oh, the, oh uh, I have not hidden the answers. I haven't hidden the answers. Uh -oh. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now they're hidden. <laughs> Hopefully so, no one was looking. <laughs> I don't think they were, I, I barely saw what happened. So we'll let, we'll give you guys time. There's no rush here. You're going to slide the, uh, the dial around to, to select which image is Air Canada, which is Canadian Tire, Mountain Equipment Co-op, Shoppers Drug Mart, and Lululemon. And don't forget to hit submit at the end because ah, that true. locks in your answers. Okay, was that a question or you've submitted? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll just let it keep going. We, uh, we know that more of you are voting, more of you are getting your votes in. I think we need more than five people in order to make this a scientific experiment. <laughs> two of these were tricky says sarah oh good we try to be tricky but not too tricky i don't know if you call that real i mean we're not making you guys answer a hundred different corporate <laughs> logos so um we're not going to be quite on the range of the other experiment that has been done but okay we've got seven answers i know there's at least 10 of you guys out there so we'll wait a little bit longer 
And when it comes to the plants, we did try and choose plants that are found locally. Most of these, I think we actually took the photos in our backyard, mm -hmm. but I threw in a little, a little trick. A little trick. All right. I'm not okay, sure I think we're good. Any, yeah. So I'm going to unhide these results and see what everyone said. Oh. So it looks like everyone is agreeing, except for on Canadian Tire Mountain Equipment Co-op and Lululemon. So Air Canada, image number four, you guys are all correct with that one. Canadian Tire is image number two. Um, so it was tricky, image number five and four, they are a little bit different, but not Canadian Tire. Mountain Equipment Co-op is image number one. So most of you guys got that right, good job. Shoppers Drug Mart is image number five. And Lululemon is image number three. So you guys did really good. Really good on our logos. <laughs> and uh, and Mike, you can, we, we can't tell if it's you or your wife and daughter answering these <laughs> questions. So you can always pull them in to help. We are going to go to the next slide and we're gonna get you guys to see if you can identify these five plants. So the plants that we've selected today are the yellow trout lily, the cucumber, the black-eyed Susie, the sumac, and the milkweed. And all of these are seen and found in Ontario, many of which are local and native. I'm not sure if cucumber is native. There is a wild native cucumber, but not the one we took a photo of. <laughs> well, eight. Oh, and I have to oh, hide countless. the answers again. <laughs> Sorry about we showed somebody's answers. And again, don't forget to hit submit at the end. You have to like go down a little bit and find that submit button for us. And don't feel bad if you don't know these that were like all the rest of the young kids in, was that study for Canada? North, North, North America. America. We're like the rest of the young kids for North America. So we can all feel young at heart if we're not getting them right. <laughs> um, and sometimes they're actually known by different things. Ha. Yes, that's a monarch butterfly on that flower. <laughs> I will not say what plant it is. <laughs> um, Excellent. Oh, we've got eight responses. We had more respond to the flowers. So that makes me think you guys know your flowers more than, yes. your, uh, than your logos. Okay, so let's see what the answers were. So everyone, the majority of people thought image number two was the yellow trout lily, which is correct. Mm -hmm. Image number three was our cucumber, which is correct. Image number one, black eyed Susie, yep. Sumac number five, mm -hmm. which is correct. And milkweed number four. Wow. I'd say there's more agreement on the plants. Yes. I'd say we just disproved <laughs> that study. <laughs> I'd say you guys know your plants more than your corporate logos. Now, the, um, the, the challenge that I threw in there was the yellow trout li lily. I am curious, did anyone know about the yellow trout lily before we asked you? Or was it process of, of elimination? Yeah, so I, that's actually a flower I discovered just last year. So I don't know if it was because we were starting this business up or because of the pandemic, but I went outside a lot last year and started really paying attention to the plants and the insects and the bugs around. And I would use my phone with this app called Seek by iNaturalist and it takes the camera and you can point it at a plant and it actually tells you what the plant is right away. So that's how I discovered the yellow trout lily and it is now one of my favorite plants. Now, I, I'm going to say, though, that you might not have seen it because the yellow trout lily is really only this big. It's actually a very small plant. It's not flashy like the black eyed Susie's that get very large and just kind of want to be noticed out there. And it's also found in the forest. So you have to go to the wooded area to actually notice it. Yeah, that and they are early bloomers. So they will be some of the first flowers that bloom. And one of the things when I discovered it, I started researching about it a lot. And one of the things I discovered about it is that these flowers live in colonies. So there will be a massive grouping of them and they can actually live to over a hundred, hundred of years old with these colonies of plants, which I thought is pretty interesting. So those colonies can be as old or older than the trees that are around them, which is very, very cool. Mm -hmm. So I love that you guys were so successful at that. Good job, everyone. That is actually the last mentee presentation uh, interaction that we will have today, but it's not the last interaction we will have. Because I think I need a stretch right now. I've been sitting for a while. Yeah, we've been sitting. So we encourage all of you to join us if you are willing and able to get out of your chairs. 
stand up. And we are going to be sprouts today. So we're going to, when you're ready, crouch down into a little ball on the floor. Give yourself a good squeeze on the ground. And then you're going to straighten those legs. You don't need to worry if you can touch your toes or not. Just straighten the legs and then slowly grow up like a sprout that's going to happen in the spring. And then start sprouting those, those arms as your leaves and put them overhead and then and then blow in the wind and get a good stretch. Uh, oh, that feels great. Oh, yeah, that was needed. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. I can see that some of you did join us. Thank you so much. And before we get back to staring at our screens, we don't want you looking at us forever. So if you have a window nearby and we can see that some of you have beautiful light on you, just take 10 seconds and look out your window and Maybe tell us in the chat after the 10 seconds what it is you're noticing. You know, it's an absolutely beautiful day out there. Hopefully some of you are being inspired to go outside after this presentation and webinar. Maybe have a snowball fight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just eat some snow. Oh, careful with okay. that one. <laughs> Don't eat the yellow snow. I think we all were told that when we were kids. <laughs> And then whenever you're ready, you can join us back or you continue to look outside while we move with the, the webinar. So we want you to reconnect with nature and we hope that today, tomorrow or sometime you're able to really get those benefits from nature and be present with nature to, to slow down, to observe something maybe you haven't seen before, to be curious about what you're seeing and to really find that awe that is in nature. Wonderful, we're seeing someone is downtown and seeing streets and cars. I'm sure there is still nature, even mm -hmm. though there are lots of human things around downtown. <laughs> oh, oh, nice, yeah. wetlands. I'm with you on the red winged blackbirds. They're one of my favorites too. I prefer the female that not everyone can recognize. And the melting snow, squirrels chasing each other. We're already starting to really notice things that maybe at this time of the day, we wouldn't be noticing had we not kind of yep. slowed down and looked outside. So we wanted to leave you with um, ideas to re-inspire your curiosity. And we, this is sort of how we split this down. We split it down between kids and youth and family and adults. But I'm gonna point out, just because you happen to be an adult does not mean you can't do the kids activities. For the kids, we suggest collecting natural objects or the kids young at heart, collecting natural objects and creating art out of them. We've been having fun doing that. Yes, so I would consider myself creative, but Cindy is really the natural art creative one and she's been giving me all these wonderful ideas and we have been making stars or we actually made these for Christmas and the holidays out of twigs and some twine. Um, we've made little bugs out of pine cones and we used um, pipe cleaners because we have some around the house, but you could use sticks and rocks or anything else. Um, and we've made little, little leaf monsters just I, I, we're not children we're we're grown adults but this it's just really fun and and interesting to see what you can make out of of natural objects but if you're not into the art or you've done a whole bunch of art and you want to do something else what we suggest for youth or anyone is to investigate why something happens so start thinking a little bit more about what you're actually seeing you know it frosts some mornings but not every morning why is that maybe you can actually collect your own data and try and find an answer you know, why is it that the snow accumulates in some spots or others? Or why does it melt in the middle of your backyard first or under the trees? Like, why is that happening? Just being a little more curious about what you're seeing. And as a family, in, in whether you have kids or not, or by yourself, you can go on a nature seek and see what you can actually notice in your backyard, from your balcony, whether you go to a walk in a conservation area or a local park or downtown, as someone said, there is nature out there, but sometimes you just have to slow down and seek it out. And then if you wanna take that even one step further, you can specifically go seeking and trying to find something you have never noticed before. 
it doesn't necessarily have to be something you've never seen, but you could go to that tree in your yard and just take a closer look at the bark. Have you ever noticed how the bark is or what it looks like or how it feels or exactly what the leaves are doing? I'm just gonna say in the chat, um, Mike said that he made Barbie furniture from wood from the forest. That's absolutely an amazing idea. That's actually perfect. And James said that if he didn't feed the birds, they would all leave. And we have three or four different bird feeders around our place. And every day we just enjoy watching the birds. And if you don't feed the birds, they will still stay here. They may not stay in your backyard though, because there may not be food there otherwise, but it is really nice to feed the birds, especially um, since we you know, are taking away some of their habitat, they may have less food to find. So when we can feed them, when the food is low in the winter, that can help them stick around and have a, a slightly healthier, um, fatter winter. And we don't want to just leave you with just those ideas. We're hoping that we're starting to inspire that curiosity through our interactions and through some of those things. But we also want to provide you with some Blue Marble unique experiences. And so Tess at Sustainable Kingston is going to help us and we'll be emailing you off this nature challenge and a nature bingo after the webinar to your emails. Um, we're giving you this uh, specific window nature seek to help you connect either from your desk when you're at work and you just need a 10 second break to see if you can look out your window and find these eight, nine, 10, 11 items. Um, see if you can find them out a window and if you can't find them just looking out a window, can you find them in your backyard or your front yard? And if you can't find that, can you find them in a park? Or maybe you can find them in all three locations. Mm -hmm. So just doing this as a challenge to inspire you connecting with nature. And then the second experience that we want to leave with you is a winter bingo. If you're like me, then you might be getting a little bit tired of winter because it's cold and you live in a basement and your mother keeps the house at 16 degrees Celsius. <laughs> um, but this is not the only thing that you can do in winter. You can pile on the blankets or you can get outside and you can make maple syrup taffy or do a snow angel or just enjoy the snow falling. There's so much to do. And do you want to grab that? Yep. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear our dehumidifier going in the background. Um, there's so much to do in winter and we hope that this bingo helps you reconnect with some of that. So we've unfortunately come to the end of this presentation, but I wanna thank you for joining us. Uh, we've had a lot of fun and thank you again to Sustainable Kingston for giving us this opportunity. Um, we are going to hang out and either answer questions through the chat or just uh, um, unmute yourself and we can have a conversation for a few minutes afterwards as well. And can you make maple syrup taffy with maple sugar from the maple syrup from the store? Yes, you can. Yes. We actually just made maple syrup taffy yesterday. Mm. Um, and one of the things I was going to share with everyone is as part of Blue Marble, we have some things that you can purchase from us, but being with nature and inspiring curiosity, it's our goal and our mission. And we wanna make sure that you can do that free of charge. So every month we have a free experience of the month and we'll give you guys a little teaser that next month, oh, next month um, we are actually sharing a video on how to make uh, maple syrup taffy um, because March is maple syrup madness here in Kingston. So we're hoping to encourage that. We do also have memberships, but free experiences you can explore to see what memberships would be like. And then we have free examples of educator experiences as well as many packages if you're an educator to help you engage and inspire your uh, learners. So thank you everyone for joining. We encourage you right now to chat amongst ourselves in the chat or on mute and we'd love to talk with you or, or wish you well on your day. Thank you, Marianne, for your best wishes, and to James as well. Whoa, put your fucking hand down. Pierre. Can I ask a question? <laughs> no. Why is the yellow trout lily, why does the yellow trout lily have that word trout in it? Does it have anything to do with fish or? There's actually, the yellow trout lily has several different names. Um, and that is the one that I learned and I have no idea why it's called that. I think it's also called yellow dog something. Yeah. Um, so there are a whole bunch of different names. So you may know it by a different name. 
Yeah, and, but I believe this the the spots do look like a trout. So it, I, I yeah, think maybe. that that variety was named for that. Yeah, because it does have brown spots. Although it's nowhere near water, so yeah. <laughs> um, I'll answer a couple of the questions coming in. So, do we have future events planned? Um, right now, we are planning um, uh, Earth Month. Um, which will be a little more hands off than this. Uh, we are thinking about maybe doing something on Earth Day, but as of right now, we don't have anything in our calendars, uh, but we will definitely on our website, we have a calendar and we'll post them all there as well as putting them up on our Facebook. Um, and James, I believe you're the one who said you're in Kingston. So are we, hello. Um, so we are in Kingston and we do in-person experiences within the Kingston area and about an hour and a half outside. Um, but then we work with and offer experiences to anyone in North America or around the world, if you're interested. And Marianne wanted to know what our vision for our business is. Well, not, not to, you know, we're, we're not completely sure where we're going to be in 10 years, but we, we have a dream and a, a vision to actually own our own piece of property and our own building so that you can come to us as well as us go to you and just have a space where you can enjoy nature. Yeah, so the whole idea actually kind of stemmed from if uh, my mom, Cindy, is retired and she mm -hmm. wanted a second career after retirement. And we always talked about potentially opening up a kids museum, um, not museum in the traditional sense of the word where you go and look at things, but yeah. really interactive. And so we've kind of morphed that idea into when we have a physical location, having an education environmental museum. But again, ignoring the word museum because it has stigma around it that is not exactly what we want. Um, so it'll be interactive place where you can come and enjoy nature. And yes, you will find us on Facebook. Thank you, James, for yeah. following, yes. Yep. We, and we really wanted to appreciate Sustainable Kingston. We've been able to have um, conversations with them about partnering. Obviously we're a little bit too new of a business to be able to fully jump into their partnership, but we've been able to find these wonderful ways to still have some type of a partnership and a presence and a connection. Um, and I think there are other partnerships within the Kingston area we are exploring. We're having talks with Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority, um, as well as Homeschool Ontario and Girl Guides Canada. So we're hoping to reach out to everyone in every way. Um, and Learning Centre, Marianne, we, we specifically call their business Blue Marble Learning Scene to try and avoid any stigmas around words like museum, centre. <laughs> So it's yeah. a scene, it's a place where you come and you see things and you um, enjoy and you interact. Yeah. It was weird, it, it's, a, it's a slightly different word for a business, but we wanted to avoid any... And it, it means yeah. we don't have a specific location um, to be able to share nature with yeah. everyone. It can be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for joining. Yeah. I'm not seeing any more questions coming in. I hope that you all enjoy the beautiful sun outside. We have actually blocked the sun from okay. ourselves. She's gonna unblock it. This, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. <laughs> we had a big piece of cardboard blocking our sun. So we're gonna enjoy it for the rest of the day. Um, and we hope we'll see you at future events. Um, again, yeah. sorry, we don't know what they are right now. We're one week old business and we're, we're planning furiously. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.